Hi guys, we are finally here, the final part of this analysis. Please, can we get this video to like 100 likes? Please, can you also share it with people so that they too can watch this? I've put a lot of effort into this guys. Please, can you also consider subscribing? I'm really going for the 500 subscribers guys. I will do the same type of analysis for the game against PSG as it goes on. Maybe after each goal, I will drop a video analyzing every play up to the goal. And we also do the same for the Basta München against Bacha game and also against Manchine. So look forward to that. We left off with Baru scoring an amazing goal after hijacking the team and Ubers starting the game two goals apiece. The star change system shows no time left, which means Snuffy and Noah have to leave the field. Substitutions are once again about to be made. Sendu is back to being fit to play and on Basta München's side, we have Hiyori being substituted as a right side back. The lineups look like this as this game is about to reach its climax. As usual, Ness and Kaiser perform the kickoff. And this time around, King Baru, free to act as he sees fit, goes straight at them to disrupt Basta München's attack. Baru's pressure is so weak that Kaiser has no issues passing the ball back to Ness. If you pay attention, Sendu and Drago don't skip a bit and follow the King's lead by trying to stop Ness, but both fail miserably. Baru instructs Drago to close in for a pincer attack on Ness, but the German magician managed to pass the ball to Kaiser. Also, please pay attention to Izagi's positioning. As you know, Hiyori fights differently than Corona. So Izagi doesn't need to stay close to Hiyori. That's why Izagi positioned himself to make use of the half space on the left side of the field. Very clever. Rico doesn't stand a chance against Kaiser and gets left in the dust. The German Emperor charges ahead as Rico can only scream and alert the defense. Now watch this. Kaiser is very smart. He quickly discards going to the left because using Grimm will only slow down the momentum of the attack. And going left is where Izaki is being marked by Perone. That means if Kaiser goes left, he will have to face Perone and maybe Izaki that will steal the ball and potentially Nico and Aiku. Again, going to the left would only slow down the attack. On the right side, however, Kunigami is keeping Aryu busy, which means if Kaiser gets rid of Nico, the coast is clear and he can unleash his Kaiser impact. Aiku won't have enough time to close the space. Kaiser doesn't even need to beat Nico and progress with the ball. He just creates space laterally so that he can use the predator eye and find a shooting cause. Of course, Aiku and Aryu can't even close the space in time to prevent the shot. Kaiser impact is unleashed, aiming for the top right corner of the goal. Aiku and Aryu can't do anything except standing as training cones. Lorenzo once again, as the last line of defense had positioned himself perfectly on the shooting course Kaiser could only go for giving the situation. Izagi had predicted where the ball would land but it's useless against Aiku who is mighty in the air. He heads the ball towards Abdi on the left side of Uber's defense but Hiyori gets to it first. Again, Baru doing what he wants was waiting for it and he comes to help Abdi who was clearly beaten by Hiyori. Seeing the field at a higher level and being quick on his feet, Nico also heads in that direction, making it a 3v1 situation. No way Hiyori could win the loose ball. Nico gets the ball and Ubers is ready to unleash their counter. You have to appreciate Sendu as he's always there when needed as a passing option. Ness and Raichi both try their best to slow down Ubers. Ubers like to attack mostly through the middle. Ubers manage to keep the ball while waiting for the King Baru to come up front. Mensa, the Barca München centre back, immediately goes to block the King. Sendu passes the ball to Baru, who doesn't keep it and passes it back straight away. As usual, Ubers string passes in order to stretch the defence while waiting to go for the kill. And you already know it's either going to be Nico or Lorenzo in charge of the attack. Now watch this. While Mensa is still committed to Baru, Beaconstock is on the left side of the defense, making sure there is no hole there. Nico has the ball but is surrounded by Ness and Raichi, 
who acted as a pair this whole time trying to stop Ubers. Lorenzo is also coming from behind and you have to notice how Kaiser and Izagi are already dashing in knowing that Nico and Lorenzo are about to do something. With her heel flick, Nico lifts the ball for Lorenzo who dashes in unexpectedly. Raichi and Ness can't do anything. Izagi and Kaiser had actually anticipated this worst case scenario and are already forming a roadblock on Lorenzo's way. And guys, this is what Izagi meant when he said that he needs another one that sees the field like him. With Hiyori on the pitch, instead of going to stop Baru, Izagi can instead try to prevent the ball from getting to Baru, which means Izagi can therefore try to stop either Lorenzo or Nico. In the meantime, Hiyori will go for Baru, anticipating the worst case scenario in case Izagi fails to stop Lorenzo or Nico. Again, there is no overlapping, exactly what Noah was talking about earlier. Each one is doing one thing in order to make use of the other movement. And exactly this is something Kaiser and Izagi are absolutely not doing. They are doing the very same thing and it's counterproductive. Lorenzo sends a perfectly timed pass to Baru who managed to free himself from Mensa. If the pass connects, that's a clear goal. However, Hiyori had other plans. Like I said earlier, Hiyori made use of Izagi's movements and decided to go and stop Baru. He manages to get the ball back. Hiyori starts the counter-attack and easily gets past Sendo. Izagi positions himself accordingly to provide passing options. Nico gets cooked and Basta Minchin counter-attack seems unstoppable. Hiyori, unlike Corona, doesn't just gravitate around Izagi. Hiyori acts as an inverted fullback and goes down the middle. Yukimiya also does the same as we can see. And notice how Lorenzo went straight to mark Kaiser. Uber's defense is at this moment very well organized still. Four players at the back. Down the middle, however, they are outnumbered having only Drago and Rico. I would also like to invite you to pay attention to Baru as this time around, the king will not join the defensive effort this early. He's more so tracking back and watching far away from the action. Izagi carries the ball forward and manages to pass it back to Hiyori while being pressured by Drago. Basta mention trio keep passing the ball to each other and keep moving forward and Ubers can't do anything. The ball comes back to Hiyori, the director, and it's up to him to decide how this play will unfold next. Yukimiya is already making a run left while Sendu is chasing him. We have Grimm free on that left side as we all know Ubers doesn't bother to defend that wide. Uber's defensive structure is looking weak right now. Nico struggles to track back fast enough. First, he only has a 78 evaluation when it comes to speed. As I pointed out earlier, look how Baru stays wide, simply watching and letting Ubers improvise as this situation does not fit one of the patterns Snuffy had taught them, as neither Nico nor Lorenzo are part of the back line. Pay attention to Kunigami who the defense simply cannot ignore. As of now, Perone is marking him. Izagi is about to make his move as he is aiming for any half space that will be left open. Yori can't stop cooking. He dribbles past Rico and Abdi and keeps moving ahead. Notice how Perone is then forced to leave his mark on Kunigami to go and stop Yori. Please watch the current state of the field. Kunigami, as rational as ever, will focus on the right side of things and he will probably commit Ario to him. This means if Lorenzo stays on Kaiser, Izagi will be in a 1v1 against Aiku. If he beats Aiku, that's a goal for sure. And if Kaiser doesn't interfere, like we, we need to remember that. Hiyori waits for the right timing to pass the ball and Lorenzo, having understood what is going on, goes straight to stop Izagi. The following play will show you why Izagi and Hiyori IQ are off the charts. With Lorenzo now chasing Izagi, he will be up against Lorenzo and Aiku. As for Kunigami, he is currently chased by Nico and will be up against Aryu and Baru who is also nearby. That's a tough call to make. But as we know, Hiyori knows Izagi so well and he will send him a pass. 
Now let's see what could happen. First of all, Aiku is a different defender compared to Aryu. Aiku doesn't have the same lateral reach Aryu has because Aryu has long limbs, right? However, Aiku has speed, strength, and quick reaction speed. This means that against Aiku, Izagi cannot attempt to use off the ball movements to get behind him like he did earlier against Aryu. Izagi has to use lateral of the ball movement instead to create enough space as he doesn't need much for a direct shot. That's a very different strategy and I feel like so many of you miss this point when it comes to Aryu and Aiko. So what could happen? Like I said, against Aiko, Izagi will look for trying to create space sideways and he will do so while coming inside because that's the best shooting angle for his right foot. Doing so will allow Izagi to avoid Aiku and Lorenzo, but Aryu will still be on his way and the chances of scoring will be tremendously reduced. But then again, you could think that going down the middle is the right call and Izagi just has to lift the ball over Aryu's head and shoot with his left. But even that will not work because Lorenzo will have time to catch up and get the ball. So at this moment, before Hiyori makes the pass, Hiyori and Izagi know that they have to go through the hardest path of facing Aiku and Lorenzo by faking a run inside and betting on Izagi's left shot. Like I don't even know if you peep this, this is a crazy level of chemistry between them two. What did I tell you? Hiyori makes the pass and Izagi makes a sideway of the ball movement. I mean from the inside. Izagi cooks Aiku and Lorenzo and Kaizo was waiting for this, trying to steal another goal, but Aryu and King Baru stand on the way. I also told you to pay attention to how Baru did not interfere with the defense and only helped when needed. And also shout out to Aryu who still managed to be on the short course no matter what Izagi came up with. It goes to show that this whole play was highly difficult and scoring a goal in that context had an overall low probability of succeeding. As usual, Aryu is mighty in the air and heads the ball in the direction of Aiko. Izagi managed to make a pass back to Hiyori for another wave of attack. Now watch this. From where Hiyori is, the goal is at a distance of about 30 meters. Nico is marking Hiyori cause after what they have just seen, Ubers cannot have Hiyori free anymore. Man has solidified himself as a threat. Also pay attention to my boy Sendu, who is already way back there, forming the last line of defense as neither Nico nor Lorenzo is around to do that. Hiyori aims to shoot and to do so, he doesn't even need to move forward with the ball. He just needs to create space sideways and pull the trigger. Notice how Aiku and Kaiser are the first one to react to the loose ball. Like I said in a previous chapter review, it seems that Lorenzo has a weakness when it comes to anything happening in the air. Ubers pave the way for Aiku who carries the ball forward. Ubers keep moving ahead by stringing passes. Ness tries his best to stop Nico but it ain't easy. And just like that, Ubers has already reached the midfield. Bastard Mijin can stop them. And for the end time, I told you that Nico or Lorenzo are the heart of Ubers attacks. Look how disorganized Bastard Minchin defense is. Yukimiya is busy marking Baru. Beaconstock has to stay nearby because you know you need two people at least to stop Baru. Mensa had to move up in order to do something. You just cannot let Lorenzo be free. Meanwhile, Kunigami tracked back and is now positioned where Hiyori should have been. I love how players from Bastard Minchin cover for each other. Nobody can stop Lorenzo and seeing that, Beaconstock had to risk it all and try his, his luck. He failed, obviously, and watch Izaki in the shadows just waiting to catch Lorenzo lacking. With Beaconstock leaving his area, Raichi immediately heads up there in the case Baro gets the ball. Again, you need at least two players to stop Baro. At the same time, Konigami is literally the last line of defense for Basta Minchin right now. Lorenzo could well carry the ball alone and score on his own. I mean, who could stop him? Also pay attention to Aiku and Sendu sprinting towards the goal. Of course, Izagi couldn't stop Lorenzo who passes the ball to Baru. With two players on him and one on his shooting course, Baru cannot convert this chance. 
Aiku and Sendo try to go for the loose ball but Gagamaro gets it first. While taking the goal kick, Gagamaro sends the ball to Hiyori and please pay attention to Uber's defense. You only have Aryu and Riko at the back. Aiku is still near Basta Munchen penalty area and Lorenzo and Nico are both about to pincer Hiyori. Ubers wants to win the ball high to score quickly, but if Pasta Munchen breaks the press, the coast might be clear, it's dangerous. With Nico and Lorenzo trying to pincer him, Hiyori takes the fight to the air with a heel flick pass to Izagi and thus avoid taking on Lorenzo and Nico in such a risky area. Hiyori and Izagi are simply way too good, no time wasted, quick passes and they are already near the midfield. So what's the current status of the field? Look at how most Uber's players are down the right side of Pasta Munchen attack. You also have Kaiser in the shadows, closely following what Izagi and Hiyori are plotting. Abdi is going to block Hiyori while Drago is waiting to react to whatever happens next. Kunigami as usual is going forward and depending where Izagi goes, he will simply go the other way. If Izagi goes inside, Kunigami goes down the right side. If Izagi goes down the right side, Kunigami will go down inside. Yukimiya is also already down the midfield, ready to help. Sendu is too far behind to do anything. Baru and Aiku are doing their best to track back as fast as possible. Hiyori cooks Abdi and passes the ball to Izagi. With the help of Yukimiya, the three of them keep trading passes to give enough time to Izagi to position himself near the goal. Passing the ball around, to give time for Izagi to get to the goal, allowed Uber's defense to be better organized, with Aiku and Lorenzo covering much more distance. This reminded me of what Itoshi Sai said at the end of the U20 game. Passing the ball around was a bad move back then, because Shido was fast enough to go to the goal in a short am amount of time, and Sai is good enough to dribble on his own and unleash a pass sent from heaven. In this case, however, with Izagi being slower and with him having a lesser or smaller range compared to Shido, Hiyori had to make sure that Izagi had to reach the goal first. This is why Hiyori decided to trade passes. Hiyori being a director doesn't mean that the actors cannot tell him what to do. Izagi stops his run so that Hiyori can go a step beyond and see the play Izagi really had in mind. This is crazy, guys. Slowing down allowed Uber's players to cover the holes in the defense. Abdi is close to Kunigami on the right side, Nico is on Hiyori, and Lorenzo is positioned so that he can either continue to mark Kaiser or go and stop Hiyori. Also, Aiku is already back so that he can mark Kaiser. Izagi is still marked by Riko and Aryu. For the nth time, Hiyori just needs to create space sideways to unleash a pass or a shot. He cooks Nico and keeps his eyes on the ball. Now watch this. Lorenzo had to take the bait because you cannot just let Hiyori shoot or send a pass. This means Lorenzo has to make his first move, which highly reduces his chances of stopping the play. You can see Rico and Abdi focused on Kunigami on the right side, and Baru near Lorenzo just waiting to see what unfolds. Kaiser aims to hijack a potential pass in the direction to Izagi. Everyone is currently watching Hiyori to see what he will do next. Everyone except one person, Izagi, who already knew how this play would unfold. That's gonna be it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And get this video to 100 likes please, so that we can start the analysis for Basta Minchen against PSG, right? I will see you in the next one.